We say all the time on this channel, renewable energy is the future. But one of the biggest roadblocks to expanding renewables isn't the energy production, but the energy storage. To make renewables the predominant energy source of the future, we'll need batteries that are cheaper, more durable, and most importantly, able to quickly deliver the energy we need when we need it. Areas where our current battery technology may have some limits. While many leading experts have pegged lithium ion as the battery of the future, a new contender may quickly take the crown, the liquid metal battery. So how exactly can this emerging battery technology make renewables more viable? We thought that deserved a deeper dive here on Tiba Da Vinci. Special shout out to Amaze for sponsoring this video. Enter for your chance to win an electric converted 1968 Porsche 912 and help an amazing cause using our link in the description. In the last decade alone, solar has experienced an average annual growth rate of 42%, while the global wind industry installed a record 93 gigawatts of new capacity in 2020, a 53% year-over-year -year increase. But to truly mitigate the effects of climate change, those numbers need to double, at least. One of the biggest factors stagnating that growth is energy storage, batteries. Today, lithium-ion batteries remain the ubiquitous power source in everything from phones and computers to electric cars. They're lightweight, easy to build, incredibly efficient, and best of all, they're rechargeable. There's good reason why executives and researchers around the world champion lithium-ion batteries as the batteries of the future. But while lithium-ion has proven vital to EVs and consumer electronics, applying the technology to large-scale renewables has proven difficult. That being said, lithium-ion batteries are already being used in utility grid storage, with Tesla installing the world's largest lithium-ion battery in Hornsdale, South Australia. Tesla also has plans with its upcoming Moss Landing project in California with PG&E, where their Megapack will act as a sustainable alternative to natural gas peaker power plants. But if we are to move hundreds of millions of cars around the globe to electric, the demand on lithium, nickel, manganese is going to surge. So that's where less energy-dense solutions like today's lithium iron phosphate batteries can help alleviate these demands. And then there's this, the liquid metal battery. So what exactly are liquid metal batteries? In a broad sense, liquid metal batteries share many similarities with traditional batteries. They have a top and bottom electrode with an electrolyte sandwiched between them. Unlike traditional batteries, whose various components are solid, hence solid state, each of these components in a liquid battery are, you guessed it, liquid. The top layer consists of a low density, negatively charged liquid metal that readily donates electrons. On the flip side, a higher density, positively charged liquid metal that will gladly receive those donated electrons serves as the anode. Between these two is a layer of molten salt, which serves as an electrolyte. That will help facilitate the transfer of charged particles, but won't mix with the materials above or below, settling into three distinct layers, kind of like putting oil and water into a bottle. How do we know which metals will donate and which will accept? Well, it turns out that the periodic table of elements is actually laid out with strong electron donors on the left and acceptors on the right. Pretty handy. At room temperature, all these active materials are solid. For the reactions to take place, the metals and electrolytes need to be heated up to about 500 degrees Celsius or about 932 degrees Fahrenheit. But once the battery is molten, it maintains proper temperature by self-generating heat as current flows through it, eliminating the need for any kind of auxiliary power. So how do these batteries work exactly? During discharge, metal electrode A loses electrons, creating A plus cations that diffuse through the liquid electrolyte, entering the bottom electrode B. At the same time, charge balancing electrons pass through the external circuit to power an electric load and enter the bottom electrode to reduce A plus to A which alloys with molten metal B. On recharging, the process is reversed. It's this back and forth of the top layer flowing into the bottom layer to generate electricity and then reconstituting the top layer by consuming electricity that gives you the rechargeability of the battery. Do you know it charges our batteries? Hit that like button. So what makes liquid metal batteries so much better for renewables? One key factor is reliability. Because all three stages of the battery are liquid, it avoids the need for separators or membranes that other batteries require. 
bypassing common failure mechanisms of conventional batteries, such as electrode particle cracking. The electrolyte is also more thermodynamically stable with the electrodes, avoiding unwanted side reactions such as film formation that can degrade the performance of other cell chemistries. This built-in resilience could mean battery lifespans measured in decades, not just years, a major win over the other battery technologies. Before we get back to the show, let me tell you about our sponsor, Omaze. Omaze has been supporting the show for years, and they've truly outdone themselves this time. Enter for your chance to win a 1968 Porsche 912 electric conversion done by Zelectric right here in sunny San Diego. For me, this checks all the boxes. It's rolling history, it's beautiful, unique, and now being electric with instant torque and 300 horsepower, zero to 60 happens in just 5.5 seconds. But it's not just fast, it's sustainable and reliable. The win-win proposition doesn't just end there because by entering, you'll also be supporting the world famous Peterson Automotive Museum. Your generosity can help the museum further their educational outreach, help inspire the next generation in underserved communities, and further their community events and preservation activities. So, to potentially win your very own electric Porsche 912 and help preserve automotive history through the Peterson Museum, enter at www.omaze.com slash 2bitdavinci. Even more impressive is how quickly liquid metal batteries can deliver energy. Their liquid nature allows for rapid ion diffusion between the electrodes, which means incredibly fast charge-discharge cycles. This means responding to grid signals in mere milliseconds. Faster energy delivery could potentially help clear a major hurdle in renewable energy production. So while the liquid metal battery may not have as much energy density, it very well might have a better power density than lithium ion batteries. Right now, a handful of startups are developing prototype liquid metal batteries with Massachusetts-based Ambry leading the charge. The company was founded by Donald Sadoway, a former MIT professor who taught freshman chemistry for over 40 years, who worked closely with a former student, Dr. David Bradwell, to develop their breakthrough liquid metal battery. In 2009, the two caught the attention of a small computer developer named Bill Gates, maybe you've heard of him, who offered to provide seed money should they ever create a startup. So suffice it to say, the technology in the works of Ambry has some big names talking. The Ambry battery uses solid particles of antimony as the cathode and a liquid calcium alloy as the anode, with molten salt as the electrolyte. While this iteration still requires high temperatures to operate, it's much safer than initial models that use magnesium requiring temperatures of over 700 degrees Celsius or nearly 1300 degrees Fahrenheit. The prototypes on Ambry are already proving to be worth their weight in molten salt, with energy capacities ranging between 400 and 1,000 kWh, with charge speeds of up to 250 kilowatts. Under a wide range of use cases, their efficiency exceeds 80%. Ambry batteries are also designed with scalability in mind. The modular design makes it easy to increase size and power by simply adding more units one on top of the other. Ambry also estimates that their batteries will cost a fraction of the current competition. The widely available materials cost about a third of the prices of lithium ion cells, while their manufacturing costs also range from a third to a half the cost per megawatt hour of lithium ion production. But these batteries won't just save money up front. In laboratory tests on over 2,000 cells with a total testing period of over 600,000 hours and over 100,000 battery cycles, the all-liquid cell showed no signs of many of the common mechanical failures that solid components and other batteries face. As this company and others like it continue to grow, we may soon see cheaper, longer-lasting, more energy-dense liquid metal batteries storing power from wind and solar in the near future. It's difficult to say what the future of battery technology will look like, and there definitely isn't a one-size-fits-all solution. But as researchers and investors start exploring different options, the potential for solving issues like intermittency and imbalances in electrical grids grow exponentially. We're going to need much more green energy moving forward if we really want to start mitigating the effects of climate change. So emerging companies like Ambry deserve our attention. But what do you think? Are liquid metal batteries the way forward for renewable energy? Let us know in the comments section. So that is a look at the liquid metal battery. What's really cool is battery packs like this, massive battery packs like this, can really offset the need for companies to build peaker power plants. So we mentioned the Hornsdale plant in South Australia. That plant is able, when there is a demand on the grid, power homes via renewable energy stored in batteries instead of the need to 
kick on peaker power plants. And one of the great challenges of renewable energy is the intermittency of it. You can't have the sun shine all day and you can't really always predict when the wind will blow. So the need for large scale energy storage is the number one challenge facing us as a species. I love the idea of investing and researching in all sorts of different applications and different approaches to solving the problem. I've recently did a video on aluminum air batteries. We've talked about lithium ion batteries extensively and the liquid metal battery is just another way that we could potentially store energy without needing all the same kinds of elements. Our earth and our crust only have so much antimony and only so much lithium and cobalt and other various elements. And so if we're gonna have hundreds of millions of electric vehicles in the future, those need the highest energy density batteries available. But homes and power plants, those can be lower energy density. So the liquid metal battery, much like the lithium iron phosphate battery, may not have as high energy density, but they have really long life cycles. A lithium iron phosphate battery, for example, is way easier to source because iron is really common in our core. And they can easily last four and 5,000 charge cycles. So my 300 mile range EV might only get charged every three or four days, which means a thousand charge cycles or so will last hundreds of thousands of miles in very many years. But a home battery or a grid store battery will be charging and discharging every single day. And that's what makes liquid metal batteries so exciting. Very cheap to source, to manufacture, and they last a really long time measured in decades. All right, so that pretty much does it for us here. Thank you so much for watching and a huge thank you to all of our tribe members, our Patreon supporters on Patreon and our YouTube channel members. You guys make this show possible. And if you wanna be a rock star supporter of this show and be involved in future topic selection and research and join our community on Discord, find our links in the description and either join us on Patreon or as a YouTube channel member. Also take a look around. We've got videos about all these various types of different approaches to energy storage, which I think is gonna be one of the great challenges of the 2020s. So take a look around, don't forget to subscribe, and until next time, I'm Ricky with Tuba Da Vinci, and remember, the future is gonna be awesome.